Hello class, in this video, we're gonna cover 7.6, which is cars. And in this section, there are only six problems. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through those six. So for number one, it says, suppose that you borrow 7,000 for five years at 8% for the purchase of a car. Find the monthly payments and the total interest for the loan. So if I wanna find the amount of payment, I'm talking about um, this formula here, okay? Um, it's also the same kind of formula. Actually, no, it's not. Um, it's a totally different formula. So you definitely have to use this formula here. This will tell me how much my payment is going to be. So first thing I did was I wrote the formula down here on my paper, and then I plugged in all the specific numbers where they need to go. So remember, these are just ones and then all the letters need to be filled in. So P is 17,000, R is 8%, N is 12, one minus parentheses, one plus 8% over 12 parentheses to the negative N times T, okay? And so when I plugged all of this in the calculator, it did spit this out. It asked me to round to the nearest dollar. So the six does change the four to 345. So that is the amount that they were asking for. That's the monthly payment. So that's my monthly payment, okay? Now it's asking me for the amount of interest. So basically I need to figure out how much did I pay altogether? Once I know that, I can take away the price that I borrowed, and then that would give me the amount of interest that I paid. So we take $340 per month times 12 months per year um, times the five years. And so then um, we ended up with 345 times 12 times five, which was this amount total paid. So I took the total paid minus what I borrowed and that's the amount of interest that I've had to pay. Now for number two, it says, suppose that you drive 40,000 miles per year and gas averages $4 per gallon. A, what will you save in annual fuel expenses by owning a hybrid car averaging 40 miles per gallon rather than an SUV averaging 16 miles per gallon? So the fuel expense, and I'm using this formula here, annual fuel expense is the annual miles driven divided by the miles per gallon times the price per gallon. So I took for the hybrid, uh, well, for both of them, it's 40 thousand miles per year. So that's the 40,000 here divided by my miles per gallon. My miles per gallon for the hybrid is 40 times the dollar, the cost per gallon, which is four. So I typed in this in the calculator and I got $4,000. So that's $4,000 per year that I have to pay for gas for the hybrid. Okay. Now for the, um, Oh, I put a digit here, I've missed a digit. I was like, why does this not look right? Um, okay, so for the fuel expense for the SUV, it's the same 40,000 miles that I'm driving per year, but divided by 16 miles per gallon times the $4 per gallon that it costs, right? So when I multiply this fraction times four, I actually end up with 10,000, okay? That's $10,000 per year. So my savings is going to be the higher amount, the 10,000 10, minus the 4,000, which means 6,000. So it's gonna cost me 4,000 per year for gas for a hybrid, $10,000 per year for an SUV. So you save $6,000 by not buying the SUV and by buying the hybrid instead. Now part B says, if you deposit your monthly fuel savings at the end of each month into an annuity annuity that pays 4%, 4.8% compounded monthly, how much will you have saved at the end of the eight years? So remember, it was $6,000 my savings per year, but they're saying that I'm depositing money each month. So if I take that and I multiply by one year over 12 months, Essentially what we're doing is 6,000 divided by 12, which happens to be $500. So it's $500 per month that I'm actually paying. Um, and that's my periodic payment. So if I wanna find out what my 
investment will return, we're going to take that periodic payment and we're going to plug it into this formula. So P here, rate in, in T, and then rate again over in. Type in this whole thing and you get this and you do round. So the six does turn the seven into an eight. And so that's how much money um, you would have in the account after the eight years. Okay. Um, now think about that. You're only putting in 6,000 per year. So really you made over 10 grand out of the whole thing. Okay. Cause 6,000 times the eight years would have been 48,000. And that's well over 48,000. So it sounds like a good investment to me. Anyway, let's keep moving. So number two says, suppose you decide to borrow 13,000 for a new car. You can select one of the following loans, each requiring regular monthly payments. Installment loan A is a three-year loan at 5.9%, and installment B is a five-year loan at 7.2%. It says A, find the monthly payments and total interest for loan A. So the payment amount is this formula, and I got that from the sheet, okay? I plugged in all the numbers where they belong because it says compounded, uh, or because it's monthly, you're making monthly payments, it is going to be compounded where N is equal to 12, okay? And then I plugged everything in and I rounded to the nearest dollar, which was 395, okay? So I take that 395 per month times 12 months per year times the three years, and I get this as my total um, investment or my total deposits. So I'm going to take, um, where did this number come from? I am missing some information here. Oh, no, this is this number. So this is my total investments minus the amount of money that I borrowed. And that gives me the amount of interest that I owed. Okay. So it's P minus A equals I. Or something like that. I'm not going to put these letters because these letters are weird. But anyway, you have to take what you paid minus what you borrowed, and that will give you the amount of interest that you borrowed, that you have. Okay. Now, B says, find the monthly payments and total interest for loan B. So we're doing all the same thing. We're doing the same 13,000, but this time we are, um, we are using 7.2% per month and we're doing it for five years instead of three years. So when I put all of this formula in the calculator, I do round it and it comes up to 259 per month. So 259 per month times 12 months times five years gives me this is the total amount paid. So I'm gonna take what I've paid minus what I've borrowed and that's going to give me this amount in interest. Now look at the two things, okay? So look at the total amounts that you've paid, okay? This one you've had to pay more than that one. And then look at the total amount of interest. This one had way higher, more interest to pay than that one. So it says, C, compare the monthly payments and the total interest for the two loans. Determine which is more economical. Economical means the one with the lowest, um, or I should say, it's the one with the lowest interest. So if this is the one with the lowest interest, then I'm gonna say, look, the loan at this one, at the loan one or loan A at this bits of information is more economical. Um, the buyer will save approximately how much in interest. Remember, this is from loan B and this is from loan A. So loan A has the smaller amount so of interest. So low A is the one that's more economical. And then um, when I take that difference, I end up with 13, 20. So this is the one that I will save. 
Okay, number three says, suppose you are thinking about buying a car and have narrowed down your choices to two options. The new car option costs 32,000 with a three-year loan at 5.35%. The used car option costs 17,000 with a five-year loan at 6.0%. What is the difference in monthly payments? So the new car payment would be the 32,000, 5.35% per month, um, and then times the three years down at the bottom. So I plugged all of that formula in the calculator and I rounded it to the nearest dollar, which was 964 per month. For the used car, it's a 17,000, 6.0%, still compounded monthly because it's monthly payments, um, and then raised to the negative 12 times five because that one's a five-year loan. So when I type all of that fraction in the calculator, I round it to the nearest dollar, I do get 329 per month. So if I take the difference of those two monthly payments, I do end up with $653 difference per month. Now, number four says, suppose you decide to buy a car for $28,635, including taxes and license fees. You save $8,000 for a, loan, a down payment, and you can get a four-year loan at 6.48%. Find the monthly payment and the total invest interest for the loan. So I'm not getting the loan for the whole $28,635 because I am putting $8,000 deposit down payment. So if I put in my down payment, that's going to reduce my loan amount to just $20,635. So when I go to figure out my payment, I'm using $20,635, my interest rate oh, 12 months in a year interest rate over 12 down here, and then 12 times the number of years, which was four year loan. So I typed this whole fraction in my calculator and I rounded it to the nearest dollar. I got 489 as a payment. So 489 per month times 12 months per year times four years gives me this total amount that I have paid, okay? So this is the amount that you have paid. So if you take the amount that you've paid, minus the amount of the loan, that will give you how much of what you paid was just interest. And so the amount of interest here is going to be 2837. So they do want both pieces of information. They want to know the monthly payment and they wanna know the amount of interest. Now, number five, says, suppose you buy a car for 61,000, including taxes and license fees. You save $12,000 for a down payment. The dealer is offering you a choice between two incentives. Incentive A is $6,000 off the price of the car, followed by a five-year loan at 7.89%. Incentive B does not have a cash rebate, but provides free financing, which means no interest, over five years. What is the difference in monthly payments between the two offers? Which incentive is the better deal? So here we go for incentive A. The car is $61,000. I have a down payment of 12,000, which means that the car, I should only be getting a loan for 49,000. But incentive A says that they will take off $6,000 from that, which means that my loan is really only $43,000. So I take the $43,000, 7.89% monthly, 7.89% monthly, 12 months times five years. And I type all of that fraction in my calculator and I do round 870 per month. Incentive B is a $61,000 car minus my $12,000 down payment gives me 49,000. However, here, um, there's no extra amount that's getting deducted. All I know is I have to pay this in monthly payments, okay? But 12 months times five years is 60 monthly payments. So all I need to do is take this amount and divide it by the 60 monthly payments since there's absolutely no interest on this deal for those five years. When I do that, I actually get a monthly payment of 817. So um, 
what is the difference between the two amounts? Take the larger amount minus the smaller amount and $53 per month is that difference. Now, which incentive is the better deal? Which one am I paying um, less per month? It's actually incentive B that's the better deal, okay? So even though they made it sound real good, like, oh, we're gonna take off an extra 6,000, that's actually not better than just having not being charged any interest. Okay, number six says, you take out a five-year loan, amortized loan, take out a five-year, I cannot say that word, amortized loan to buy a new car after making monthly payments of $242.30 for three years, you still owe $5,345. If you decide to pay off the loan or pay the loan off, how much will you save in interest? So we have two years remaining on the loan times 12 months per year, which means we actually have 24 monthly payments remaining. So if I take this dollar amount and I multiply that by the 24 months, I'm going to pay this in the remaining two years. So this is paid in remaining two years. Okay. Now, this is the payoff amount. So if I take my payoff amount, or this is the payoff amount. If I take the amount that I'm going to pay, if I were to continue making my payments for the rest of those two years, minus the payoff amount, you actually save $470.20, which is almost two monthly payments. So if you pay it off, you can save two monthly payments. Um, that is the end of this particular section. So um, I will see you guys in the next video.